Good evening, everyone, and welcome to these office hours for this Demo Lions Minecraft Education Edition Competition 2022. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, as well as Microsoft, and it is part of the 2022 STEM Discovery Campaign. My name is Bjorn Bachmann, and I'm coordinating European Schoolnet's activities in the STEM Discovery Campaign. Together with us today in the room, we have my colleagues Isidora Salim and the Rocio Benito, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. So if you have any issues with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send them a message in the chat. But most importantly, it is with great pleasure that I am welcoming our speaker for today, Nina Gibert from Microsoft. Thank you so much for being here with us and presenting and answering to our audience's questions today. Now, let me just um, continue with some technical aspects. You will see that all microphones have been disabled. So if you have a question to our speaker, you can just post them in the chat. And later during the Q&A session in the end of today's webinar, you will also be able to raise your hand and we will unmute your microphone if you want to speak. Also, to get a greater experience out of this webinar, open the chat window where we will be sharing useful information and links with you throughout this event. And of course, that's also where you can post your comments and questions. Here's already the first link we will share with you. That is the in the chat, you can now click on the participation list to confirm that you attend this webinar. And we ask you to do this so we can prove this event took actually place and that we can continue organizing events like this one in the future. Also, if you are interested in a certificate of participation, this is the only way that you can request one. Now, let's move on to our agenda for today. We will begin with an introduction to the STEM Alliance and uh, the STEM Discovery Campaign and some information on the STEM Alliance Minecraft competition. We will then move on to a demonstration by Nina Gibert, who is our Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. She will show you live how to download and access the Minecraft Education Edition and how to build Minecraft worlds with your students. And as you know already, you will be able to ask questions to the speaker throughout this webinar which we will then address in the end at the Q&A session. So please don't be shy and just share your questions and thoughts with us in the chat. Now, before I continue with the, the Minecraft demonstration, let me just quickly introduce this year's STEM Discovery Campaign. Now, the STEM Discovery Campaign is an international initiative organized every year by Scientix and some of you may already know it because it's not the first time that this is organized. And uh, the STEM Discovery Campaign invites projects, organizations, schools, youth clubs, really uh, educational um, organizations across Europe and around the world to celebrate STEM careers and studies. The theme for this year's campaign is STEM for All. And as you probably are well aware, STEM can be found in pretty much all aspects of our lives. That is why we believe everyone should have access to STEM education. And we would like to emphasize the value of science, technology, engineering, and maths. This year, we encourage you to organize events and activities that raise student awareness and make STEM accessible truly to everyone. So if you organize a STEM related activity or if you participate in an event like this one, share it with the world and post it on the STEM Discovery Campaign map. Besides, check out this year's competitions and win prizes. One of the many competitions in this year's STEM Discovery Campaign is the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition organized by the STEM Alliance and Microsoft. In this competition, uh, you can engage students in creative thinking, problem solving, and a better understanding of democracy, citizenship, and peace, as it's organized under the theme, Active Citizen Building for Peace. In partnership with the Nobel Peace Center, this competition revolves around learning about the Nobel Peace Prize winners and their amazing achievements. You can challenge your learners to work in teams of one to five students, and using Minecraft Education Edition, they can design and build solutions 
using a world template and teaching resources. So Nina Gibert, our expert, will later show you more about this. But to begin with, I would actually like to ask you a question. So how familiar are you with Minecraft? We would like to know this um, just to see if the audience has some basic knowledge of Minecraft or not at all. So on this slide, you have several options to enter the Menti poll. Either you click directly on the link on the slide in the chat, or you can scan the QR code with your phone. Uh, you can also go to menti.com and enter the numbers 10, 92, 49, and 6. So while you are joining the poll and reply, I will switch my screen on so that you can see the results. And exactly, you will also find the link here in the chat. And just feel free to share your current familiarity with this. This will be interesting for us to see how you are familiar or not so much and also how we can address the questions tonight. So we can see already that there are some respondents who are quite comfortable in teaching my Minecraft to students. Some of you also use it in your free time and building worlds. But the majority actually has heard about it, but never used it. So this is interesting to know because we will address this. And um, Nina, in her uh, presentation and demonstration, can take this into consideration so that we can address this. All right, thanks a lot for your responses. Let's move back to the slides which might take a moment and yeah so taking this into consideration i would just like to show you a bit how to participate in this year's competition the stem alliance minecraft education edition competition so before nina will share some more insights on how to download the world and help you get to know minecraft i would just like to share some let's say, technical aspects of how to participate in this competition. So the competition calls for educators in primary and secondary schools in Europe to integrate Minecraft Education Edition in their teaching, and you need to submit a 90-second video of the world that the learners have created. Now, there are two categories. Either your team is composed of learners that are 13 years old and younger, or there are learners that are 14 years old and older. The competition, and mark this down, it will run uh, until the 30th of April, and participating is fairly easy. You just visit the competition website and follow these steps. First of all, have a look at the terms and conditions that you will find on the website, and they will provide you with all the guidelines and information you need. But then the first step is to register to the competition. So this way we can send you updates in case we extend the deadline and we can send you further guidance and information along the way. Step two would be to download the Active Citizen Minecraft world. And um, this you can do to, yeah, also on uh, the, the website, the link is here on the slides. And to complete the build challenge, you will need to work with this, uh, with this world. So you will find the link online. Step three would be to prepare for the challenge. So if you're new to Minecraft, there are many resources available to help you get started. Of course, you did the right thing in joining these office hours uh, because here you can ask your questions to the expert, but you can also check out the introduction videos and teacher trainings that we provide on the website. Also, make sure that you are familiar with the learning objectives of this build challenge because you need to address these to actually stand a chance to win the prizes. 
Step four is to integrate the build challenge into class with your learners. So split your class into groups of one to five students and specify the actions to build a world using Minecraft Education Edition. And again, Nina will share more insights on this later. Step five would be to build your vision for peace, or actually I should rather say your learners, your students will do this. So the developed worlds need to address the topic, what's your vision for peace? Your students need to think about something that they're passionate about and want to change. And you can support your students in building a model of a new world where this change has already been implemented. Then step six is to take a 90 second video of your student's creation. So stick to the 90 second video um, to the 90 second limit. Take a video of each of the worlds that your learners created. So it's one video per group. And these videos should clearly present the developed world and explain the creation in detail. So you could consider doing a voiceover or your, even better, your students uh, can do this. And make sure to present novelty, creativity, as well as to send a clear message on democracy and peace. Remember also that the video and the recreated world must be in English. Now, step four is to submit your video and the supporting materials, if you have any. And you remember the registration form from the beginning. This is the same a form that you can use at this time. However, you can actually submit your entry and all entries must be submitted by the 30th of April before midnight Central European summertime in order to be eligible for the competition. Now there are two last steps. The eighth step would be to spread the world. So let the world know about your participation in this competition and in the STEM discovery campaign by sharing your activities in social media, tagging the STEM Alliance, the STEM Discovery Campaign, and Minecraft Education Edition. And of course, you can submit this in the STEM Discovery Campaign map as well. And finally, win your prize. So there are two prizes for the two winners of both categories, and it's a promotional video as well as various Minecraft merchandise. And uh, these prizes will be handed out both to the teachers and the learners early this summer. Now, as I mentioned, there are several resources. Here again, check out the website and the competition's terms and conditions, and you will find all useful resources there. Now, before we move on, let me just uh, jump back to the participation list. Again, as mentioned in the beginning, it is crucial that you validate your attendance in this webinar, and only this way we can prove that you were present today. Again, if you would like to get a certificate, you can submit and request it with this participation list. Now, let me introduce you to our expert from Microsoft, Nina Gibert is a global Minecraft mentor and Microsoft innovative educator expert. For the past three years, Nina's goal has been to help educators and students across Europe to embrace game-based learning as part of their teaching process. She is an advocate of using modern educational tools in schools and has been helping educators integrate Minecraft Education Edition into their classrooms. So Nina, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm great. How about you? I'm great. Thanks a lot. So Good to hear. So, yeah, thank you so much for this introduction, introduction and for inviting me um, to speak at this event. So hi everyone, my name is Nina Gibert and I will be showing you some basics of Minecraft Education Edition today. And I'll just take over with the presentation. So let me just share my screen okay let me know if you see it should be visible now right yes we can see it thank you oh, perfect thank you okay so to participate in this challenge you will first need minecraft education edition 
um, and of course your accounts to sign in. You can find Minecraft Education Edition on education.minecraft.net website. Um, and when you visit this website, just click on this download button at the top of the page, and that will take you to the page where uh, you can download the game that is suitable for your device. Um, you can use Minecraft Education Edition on Windows devices, Chromebook, Mac, and iPad, uh, but the version that is suitable for you will just appear here in this uh, red, red area in the middle of the page. So just click download now and wait for it to download to your device. Obviously, I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not going to install it now, but just so you know, the file is over 600 uh, megabyte, uh, megabytes large, so it will take a few minutes to download. And I'll just give you a um, a link in the chat. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Isidora. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you downloaded the file, you can find it in your designated um, download folder. Um, on your on your device. Um, for me, it's not downloaded yet, but when it will be downloaded, it will have this kind of um, icon. So usually your st students are already familiar with Minecraft and have been playing it for years. Um, so you have to make sure that they have the education version of the game, um, not the, not other versions. They usually know Java or Bedrock Edition. Um, but you can see the difference in icons. Education Edition has this bookshelf icon. Um, so if you see if Minecraft icons look different than this, then you have the wrong version and you have to download this one. So now that we downloaded it, uh, we have to install it, obviously. And since I already have it, you know, I won't show you the process. Just, you know, click on it twice and follow the instructions. Um, but I will just start Minecraft up and just so it's a bit faster, I will just turn my camera off for this part. So once I um, start Minecraft Education Edition, I have to sign in with my with my account. So most of you should be able should have your account already or should be able to get demo versions of these accounts. Um, if you don't just drop a line in the chat and Isidora and the team will help you. Um, but if you do have your account, just sign in. Type in your, your uh, username and password. Okay, so once we sign in, we see a menu with four options here in the middle. The easiest way to find the Active Citizen World is by clicking on New and Featured or you can find uh, a couple of highlighted lessons with that change every few weeks or months. So I'd suggest you keep coming back and see if there are any new lessons for you. Uh, but today we will use the Active Citizen lesson, which is the third lesson here in the top row. Uh, what you have to do is just click on it. It will open a whole new um, menu with some information about the world. Um, who it's appropriate for, like age and difficulty wise, um, that there's also a short description of the word of the world as well as tags, which help you, uh, which helps you categorize these lessons and see if they are useful for your school subject. You also can um, find some resources here by clicking on the lesson plan, but to, um, so I also suggest that you look at the resources that are available to you um, before um, before you start this challenge with your students. Um, and if time permits, we will actually look at them together later. But when you are ready to jump into the world, just click Create World Lesson button. <clears throat> this might take a few minutes depending on um, your computer. Usually when, some, when it's loading, you see some hints and tips that tell you how to <clears throat> that help you it help you with your Minecraft gameplay. OK. So we logged into the world in front of this quite impressive <laughs> building. And as you can see, you only have one way to go. So the lesson itself is designed in such a way that it guides you through the world. 
So if you have never played Minecraft before, I just want to go over the movements first. You can move forward by pressing the W key on your keyboard, move back by pressing S key, move left by pressing A key and right by pressing the D key. So to look around the road, move the mouse. And if you're not used to it, um, it can take some practice <laughs> to get a hang of it. But Minecraft actually has this neat little feature. Um, if you look to the bottom left part of the screen, you can see it says H, show controls. So when you press H, you can see the basic movement controls as well as how to access your inventory, jump, use chat and some other controls that we will not use today. So when we enter this building, we are greeted by Alfred Nobel. Uh, we, already, we all know Alfred Nobel, right? So it's a Swedish chemist and engineer who is best known for inventing dynamite and of course the Nobel uh, uh, Prize. So in this game, the um, Alfred Nobel is an NPC, which is short for a non-player character. The role of these NPCs in, in Minecraft is to give the player information and to guide us and to interact with them. We must click on them with the right mouse button. Um, as we've done so now, now he introduces himself and asks us if we are here to visit the Nobel um, Peace Prize or participate in the challenge. So the active citizen world is structured, so it has a couple of activities which are led by famous Nobel Prize winners. I strongly recommend you to take a look at these activities um, if we have enough time in the end. Um, we'll actually go over one of the activities together, but for now, let me just quickly show you how this works. So, for so, let's just choose the visit, and okay. And in the room behind him, there are four paintings on the wall, and each painting has an NPC in it um, that represents one of the four Nobel laureates. And on the side of this build here, you can see. Uh, who each of them is. So if you wish to enter the activity, you need to press this button in front of the painting and that makes the NPC come alive and walk towards you. Again, we right click on him um, to, to read what, like who they are and what they are famous for. For now, we'll just click exit so we can walk around some more. Um, or if you wanted to go into the activity, you just click start adventure. So I really recommend you do that uh, with your students, even if you don't have time to get into this um, today. And it's also good to do that before you start a challenge so they get an idea of what kind of topics come into play for this challenge and get some inspiration from them. Um, just make sure to tell the students that this world was made by professionals and we are not expecting them to build something on this level. Of course, they won't be they won't even be able to do that. So let's just uh, let let this uh, serve as an inspiration, not as the level of build that is expected of them. So let's walk back to Alfred Nobel and talk to him again. And this time we will choose build challenge. And now we are teleported into this area where the whole challenge will take place. Again, we are greeted by uh, Alfred, we just here to remind us what the purpose of the challenge is. Um, and we'll just click OK. So what we can actually do, um, you, we can fly around this area. So you do that by double pressing spacebar to fly higher up, hold space and to fly down, just hold shift and to completely stop flying, just double press spacebar. Now, why is this flying so important? when your students are building whatever they decide to build, it's much easier to move around and access places high up if you fly. But you can see these um, copper blocks on the floor. This is your canvas. This is the build area for this challenge. So let's just learn how to build. In Minecraft, we actually have an inventory that we can access by clicking E. Some people remember it because E can stand for everything, um, but you can always click H here for these controls um, and the key, see the keyboard hints if you forget how to access it. So when you are in this inventory, 
you can see all the blogs that are available to you. These are the blogs that your students will use for building. Um, you can search uh, for the blogs by going to this uh, um, search tab, or you can switch between tabs um, so they are actually filtered by their use, like nature, items, equipment, and construction, whichever works for you, just use that one. And here, this one just has all of the all of the um, items and blocks. <clears throat> so if you go into construction, for example, if you see this um, plus, it will open to open more of the same, more of the same type of log, but in different variations, different colors, different uh, materials, and so on. <clears throat> Um, so let's just take a few, uh, just take a look at a couple of different types of blocks. Obviously, we can't cover all of them today, but I just want to give you a rough idea of what's available to you. So you can just choose between different types of wood, different types of uh, fences and walls, different types of stairs. You also have some um, doors and then trap doors. Glass is really useful, um, some slabs and different types of stone, sand, copper, uh, concrete, uh, sorry, uh, concrete wool, concrete powder, uh, just all these, just various types of, of items as well as blocks that you can use. As you can see, they're not only just building blocks, but you have food as well, or, or corals, or some kind of, you know, flowers and plants, also dyes, but you might, not need them as much in this in this challenge. Um, as well as some spawn eggs, I would stay away from these. I don't. You can't really use them here in this uh, challenge, but your your students will probably know them. But this can just um, make random animals that are in Minecraft or NPCs appear. Um, but we will not look at them today. And you also have weapons and tools and arrows, potions and uh, some other some other types of blocks. Um, <clears throat> so let's just uh, select a few materials and let me show you how to actually place them. So you can see me just you can either left click with your mouse button on on a block and move it into your hotbar. Hotbar is this area at the bottom here. This is where you store all your items items that you will use to um, build, or you can actually. Um, if you want to look cool in front of your students, <laughs> you can actually just hold shift and click a uh, left click on on a on a block to move it directly into your hotbar. Either way is fine, of course. Um, so now I have chosen some items that are available to build with. And you can see on the right side of the screen that I'm holding an item. So if you don't have any items in, in your hand, then you will see the actual hand of the character. I think it's a bit slow now. Just let me know if you can. OK, yes, it works now. <laughs> so you can see the actual hand of the character. Um, and if, when you choose an item, you can see it on your in your right hand. <clears throat> so to switch between these items, you can either use your mouse wheel or press numbers one to nine. The left square of my hotbar is number one and the right square is number nine. So you can also see what you're holding by looking at the hotbar. Whichever square has like a thick border around it is the item that is chosen. Um, since we are in creative mode, all the blocks are available to us in infinite stock, so you can never run out of items. So we have our items chosen and we are now ready to build. To place the block, you need to look at the block you want to build on. So you can see this little plus sign in the middle. This is where our character is going to place things. So click on the right mouse button to place it. So most of the Minecraft um, blocks aren't affected by gravity. So they will stay exactly where you uh, where you place them. But they need to have a block below um, before you place them. So you have to place them on top of one block so they can stay there. Um, you can always 
replace the blocks in your hotbar or put more um, than nine nine stacks. These these sixty four uh, um, yes sixty four <laughs> items are called a stack. So you can just hold more than nine stacks in your inventory, so you don't have to look around in the library for them. You just open your inventory by pressing E, and you can see your character if you click on this. Uh, <clears throat> if you click on this chest icon, so this is your inventory. Is your it's like your character's backpack, and it can fit up to thirty six stacks of items. Um, so in case you press E and you can't see the block library, just switch between these three options at the top. So open book uh, is just the block library, book and chest are opens the library and your inventory. Um, that might be the best way to use the inventory depending on your preference, of course. But if you click on the chest, um, you can only see your inventory and hotbar as well as your character. OK, so now that we've built this um, professional looking structure, we might want to add some things to explain what exactly we made. For that, we can use signs, boards, uh, slates, posters and book and quills. So I'll just quickly take them. Just show you how you can. So just there. board and select and if you know what you're looking for you can it's just easiest to to type to type the name of the item in here and you can just find it very easily <clears throat> so um when you've done your build and you want to you know use some signs um you can you can place it on the wall or you can pay, uh, place it on the ground sign only can only write so i can only write four lines of text on this sign, then I run out of space. OK, oh, it worked out well. <laughs> so um, sign cannot be edited. And if you wish to change the text later on, you can, of course, break this, the sign with your left, um, left mouse click. Um, and you can just place a new one but it can also be placed on any type of wall or on the ground. Uh, besides the signs, there are also three types of chalkboards that you can use to write messages on it. These are slate, um, poster, and, um, and board. So let's just, this board is the biggest one. Then we have a poster that is the smallest one. And we have a, uh, sorry, the middle one and slate, which is the smallest one. <clears throat> so this can be edited. So let's just write write some sample text, okay? Oh, text. And once if I right click on it again, I can delete the text and just write write a new one. Um, this is the same with slate and and poster, and it can also be put on the wall. <clears throat> So um, just in case you have a lot of text, I always recommend that you have a backup Word or Excel file on your computer. Um, you can also use an item called Book and Quill to write text into a book. So let's just find that. Book and Quill is this one. Just put it in your, in your hotbar, right click on it with, when you have it in your hand, and then you can, you can also write in a book. And just place it somewhere. I'll show you in a second how to do that. So you have to sign the book and uh, enter a title. Just enter a title here, okay. And sign and close. And once we've done that, we cannot edit this book anymore. And these these things, these um, boards and signs and book, are really great for conveying some information and some adding adding some um, some details in your build. Um, and you can also not just find a chest. It's nice to when you build something to also decorate uh, the inside of the build and you can just have a chest. You can make a double chest if you place two of the chest next to each other. And you can put a book here so whoever goes in here can just uh, find the book. Or it's much nicer actually to put it on a lectern. 
OK, let me just take the book back so I can place it here and put it on the lectern so people can uh, access this book as well. <clears throat> so this is a really <laughs> quick building tutorial. Um, like I said, just wanted to repeat real fast to place the block. Uh, right click on the on the ground and to uh, remove it left click on the block that you want to that you want to um, remove so even though minecraft allows us to place npcs these characters like um, alfred nobel they cannot be used here and when you are done you can just record your build now or if you're not ready to record right away uh, what you do is you click escape and save and exit and save and exit again. And your world is going to um, save, so you won't lose your progress. So even if you if you don't finish in one go, you can always find it later. And you do that by clicking play, go to view my world and find active citizen world here and click play. And again, now you can enter the world again. You see it's exactly as uh, as we've um, put it and they can so you can record it even if you're not ready to record it right away and of course you can build over multiple sessions um okay this is a somewhat quick run through of the important features that you need to know as an educator uh, what i wanted to show you as well is um since you this uh, challenge is going to be done in groups of five it's good to use a multiplayer uh, just easiest if the students are able to build in the same world at the same time that's why you or one of the students should host a multiplayer world that the whole group can join and play together um, so how you do that you can just go into the world maybe that's the easiest way you can go into the world press escape and press on this click on this um, tab here with four faces and start hosting to we'll ask you if you are if you will really like to start hosting so we say confirm and we give this join code to the students and i will show you how they uh, join so if i go out of this um, of this world and again this is our start menu you can go into play press join world and this is the code that uh, that was shown before. I can just show you again. So when we, or you can host it by pressing the world here and press host. So it's important that the students are using the same um, tenant when using uh, multiplayer. So let me just show you the code real fast. So once I'm here, you can see the join code. You can refresh it if you wish. Um, to find I don't know, an easier one or whatever. <laughs> um, you can stop hosting, you can share the link actually, and here you will see your students who are joining you. But with multiplayers, it's important that the students are on the same tenant. What I mean by that is if you look at a username, so let's just, I'll, um, just go out for this and actually sign up so I can. Ah, okay, this is perfect. Okay, so if you can, if you look at my username, you will see that it consists of digital school 10 and then at sign and then some, this is, this part here is a tenant. So you, you're gonna have a different one, maybe, um, maybe you'll have the name of the, your organization, like your school or microsoft.com, basically everything after this at sign is a tenant and this needs to match. So I can have digital school 10, digital school 9, digital school 8. Um, but as long as this is the same, we should be able to join the same um, world. Now, actually, oh, let me just that I already have here ready for you that will help you with all these uh, how to set up the world because it's quite tricky if you're doing it for the first time and of course we don't really have that much time to um to to go into that so maybe um Bjorn, you can tell me do we want to do the 
uh, Q&A session now, or should we go into one of the activities or just start with the questions? What do you think? Do we have well, enough time? <laughs> yeah. Hi, so thank you so much for this demonstration already. We do have a couple of questions, so maybe let's address them first and then we can see if we still have some time for a, uh, yeah, for a demonstration of the challenges. How does that sound? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, let me just see. Uh, I think it's a bit confusing. There are two places to build, so to be sure the build for the challenge has to happen outside. Yeah, it is a bit <laughs> a bit strange um but yeah it's it's this one basically when you talk to um alfred just go to build challenge but i'm sure if whichever whichever space you build in they won't they won't deduct points for that so you know it's not it's not the end of the world if you don't choose this one but just to be sure i would just go start the game up go to Alfred Nobel and and go to, directly to build challenge. Oh, my, I don't think I'm I'm uh, sharing screen anymore, anymore, right? Okay, let's just I'll just show this again. <laughs> yes, please. sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just go here to Alfred Nobel like in this in this area. Let me just, and we just visit so I can show you again. So this is where we come in, right? This is this is where we start uh, when we enter the world. Talk to Alfred, say OK, go to build challenge, and this will be the area where you need to build. <coughs> um, OK, so. Yeah, so then we also had another question in case the students don't know how to speak English. Can the teachers add the voice over in the video themselves? And that's a question that I can answer. Definitely, you can uh, you can do the voice over here. And uh, yeah, and however, please note that the the role as well as the uh, yeah, your voice over needs to be in English. So uh, please be aware of that. And secondly, and that's the most important, of course, it needs to be the students who build the world. So you can, of course, instruct them in your own language, but uh, you, um, in the end, you, you need to submit this in English. Also, if you, however, yeah, if you use a voiceover from the students, then be also aware that you need a consent from their guardians if they're underage. So yeah, take these uh, points into consideration. And um, yeah, when you plan the activities, that might be good to think of. If I can just um, jump in here, um, someone asked if I can if you can give more information about the build topic. Um, yeah, what I would recommend actually for you to do is to go to uh, education.minecraft.net, and you can actually just write active citizen. Oh wait, I'm not sharing anymore, am I? <laughs> Okay. So. Exactly. Yes, I was uh, taking the the control back because there was uh, it was showing uh, several <laughs> like an infinite screen. So go ahead. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so just go to education.minecraft.net website, and here you can you have a search bar as well, so you can just search by active citizen and as well here. But I think I prefer this one. <laughs> but let just let just show you. So you can see the lesson here, click on it. And you have all kinds of resources um, for the teachers, for different themes. You can actually get some PowerPoints. You can see um, what concepts they have to address. So they have really free reign over what they want to build, but it's really good to go over the activities inside the world first, those four activities, those four Nobel um laureates that you know are famous for different that or that they, they got nobel peace prize for different uh, in different uh areas different things so what you i recommend you do the activities together with your students because they are really fun and <laughs> i think they're gonna you're, they're gonna learn a lot they're gonna get so much um so many ideas so many 
and just so many in, so much inspiration from it. But of course, you can also go to over like to this website and find all kinds of resources and what are the performance expectations, some kind of learning materials again, and as well as the world file. Um, just follow this. Um, OK, now this is not working. This is a bit funny. OK, <laughs> um, but yeah, and you have the active citizen here as well. On the main page is the first thing uh, you see when you go to education.minecraft.net. So you have all kinds of resources here as, as well as well as a trailer, um, some videos, again, some more information about the um, Nobel Peace uh, Prize laureates that are included. And on the STEM Alliance website as well, there that I think this is the best the best um, resource for challenge related for challenge related um, just questions, information, everything that um, that Bjorn told you at the beginning about how to how to apply and where to submit your videos and just what you need to do. <laughs> exactly. So for this kind of information. Really feel free to join uh, the website there on the STEM Alliance, uh, especially for this competition. And you will see the step by step guide as well as the terms and conditions, which will give you all the information and will direct you also to further guidance there. And as I've mentioned, of course, do register because we will then be able to send you updates in case something changes or if we have some new information about this competition. So I warmly invite you to do this. Then I think we have a question again from Virginie. Uh, maybe uh, we can unmute um, this participant and then uh, they can ask their question. Um, otherwise, we do have it in the chat already. So if you want to speak, do let us know. Hi, hello. Hi there. Um, my um, last question I uh, typed was um, if there is any certificates we can fill in for the students after the build, um, because um, I've printed out those from Hour of Code and students are very um, yeah, glad and uh, showing off their <laughs> certificate. So uh, it could be um, um, a trigger for other teachers to um, yeah, to access the the contest. Yeah, so what we will do is in the end, we will send out certificates of participation. And this, however, we will only do at the end of the competition. And uh, otherwise, indeed, it's a good idea to to create certificates if you want to go ahead there um, already. I am not sure, uh, Nina, maybe if there are templates for uh, Minecraft um, that teachers can use, do you know? I don't think there are any for active citizen. I haven't noticed them, but yeah, the hour of code obviously um, can be used for now. But yeah, if you get the participant um, certifications at the end from your side, then I think that should be that should be great. But I think even maybe something that it's worth noting, at least in my experience, let me just turn the camera on. So um, when you are working with Minecraft Education Edition, yes, of course, obviously it's great to get um, certificates for your students as well as for you as a teacher. Um, but just I've noticed that they are really interested in, to, in participating just because they get more chance to play Minecraft. Maybe they aren't allowed to, you know, spend so much time on the computers at home and they really want to show off what they can do. So even for you, uh, for everyone who said that you are beginners in Minecraft um, and maybe are a bit shy or scared to participate in this challenge, what I always tell the educators is don't be scared to learn from the students. They will know much more than you do about Minecraft, and that is fine. Even I'm like the, the expert here. I get I teach Minecraft classes with and then I have some Minecraft clubs, but the kids, they they've absorbed so much knowledge. They watch so many YouTube videos and all this about Minecraft, and I always learn from them, and that's fine. And it's actually a positive thing to to learn from them because then they're really proud that they can teach you something as well so don't be scared don't even if you don't know minecraft just let let the students teach you for once 
Absolutely. And I have just looked up some information here that uh, there are no certificates for the lessons itself or themselves, but we do have a challenge certificate of participation that Minecraft uh, provides. All right, then I would have uh, some time here, I think, still for some more questions. Uh, from the audience. Please, if you have questions, do raise your hands or drop us a line in the chat. Um, yeah, we still have some minutes to go, so feel free. Otherwise, a question that has reached us in the registration form already. Ah, I see uh, Virginie. Yeah, sorry, it's not, a, not really a question, but um, we're translating all lessons to Dutch, so if there are any people who want them, um, they can contact us uh, through um, the team of uh, Flanders. There's a team website in Flanders uh, or a team in teams. <laughs> um, so they can, can contact us to get those lessons. Perfect. Maybe you can leave your contact in this chat as well. Oh, There's someone. That's OK. OK. <laughs> Excellent. Be aware that this is, of course, recorded, so uh, this will be discoverable then. But if you have a link that you can share, then feel free to do so. Great. And otherwise, um, the question that has reached us is, how can you integrate this into a classroom? Do you have any advice or experience with that? So how many lessons are needed and how much preparation would you calculate for this? Okay, so it, um, yeah, that's a really broad question. Yeah, um, first of all, if you play any games, that's a plus because then you're already familiar with the movement. Sometimes people are kind of scared of the, it's a bit of a learning curve at the beginning for teachers, especially, and sometimes they kind of get scared to, <laughs> uh, to, to do that, to take the time and to incorporate that and in to integrate it into your, into your classes. Uh, but it's, really worth it. It depends on your class as well. So obviously Minecraft has some amazing coding tutorials. So if you're an IT teacher, then you can in integrate those. I don't know if you know um, if they know the um, where to find the lessons, but I'll just show you really quick because um, Minecraft basically does all of these things um, for you, like preparation and all these, you can get all these resources and lesson plans um, before you start. But let me just show you, if you go to play and view library and subject kits, first you can see this, you have some, some, some folders here with like science worlds, with some math world, some with some computer science, um, tutorials, you really have all these kind of worlds that you can use, like you can, there's some of, some are like escape room types of things, then you can uh, learn about World War, ancient Egypt, just all kinds of, all kinds of uh, topics. And I think it, someone can find, you know, all the teachers can find at least one lesson that they, that they want to try. Um, what I would suggest as a teacher is to like you go to view library and go to how to play maybe and then just go to start here or you know use keyboard or touch or whatever uh, device you have and if you're not familiar or comfortable using Minecraft go into these tutorials learn how to move learn how to place and break blocks, learn how to interact with different levers, buttons, and so on, learn how to use camera and portfolio. Just you really have tutorials for all these kinds of things that um, that I introduced you really <laughs> quickly today in this in this session. Uh, but yeah, if so, you know, it's always good to repeat and to relearn these things because I know that one hour is not enough to obviously cram all this knowledge that um that i gave you today so what i would do as a teacher i would maybe start here get familiar with how minecraft world um, works and then go into subject kits and then find my subject and then let's go on and on into computer science and just find find the world that i'm interested in and just try and go over it first yourself um, if you go when you choose the world you also have lesson plans so 
which leads you to education.minecraft.net website. And you can just find all these learning objectives. You can find all these supporting files, external references, educator guides. Let me just show you what they look like. So just just try it, and you don't have to use Minecraft in your in your um, classes like seven hundred percent of the time. Just you know, try it with one group first, see how they like it, see how you like it, and then maybe do it again. Maybe first uh, start as a reward and then kind of upgrade. Obviously, Minecraft is not meant to replace your usual teaching process, but it's just meant to enrich it and to, you know, add some new new materials. And it's actually, uh, you'll notice that the motivation of students really goes up, really goes through the roof when they use Minecraft because they kind of forget that they're actually learning stuff as well because they're so focused they are, that they are immersed in this experience and then after that i always um in class i always like finish like 10 minutes early tell them to that they need to uh save an exit you know go out of minecraft and then i ask them so what did we learn today what was this lesson about just talk to them get feedback from them and they will tell you as well um, and you will get ideas from them as well what can be improved just just take it slow, go one one lesson at a time, then don't overdo it. But don't worry, like the the students always know <laughs> more than you <laughs> and they will always teach you things. So just Absolutely. don't be, yeah, you, you're there as a teacher. You're there to guide them, to show them the lessons. You're not there to be the Minecraft expert. Just have that in mind. Great. Well, thank you for these uh, this information and uh, these ideas. I um, yeah, I, I think uh, this already gives some good guidance to our participants and to anyone interested in this competition and integrating Minecraft into their teaching. And uh, with this being said, just uh, one addition: the students, of course, they uh, also need accounts so uh, that they can log in to the multiplayer world that uh, Nina was mentioning. And uh, you need, to, uh, if you don't have the license, uh, we also provide some alternatives of a trial version on the STEM Alliance Minecraft competition website. So you can also check that out. Now, we have almost reached the end of this uh, of these office hours. So before we end, I just want to draw your attention again to the 2022 STEM Discovery Campaign and the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition. And you will find all the necessary information on these links here. Uh, but of course, you can also stay tuned and find out more on social media. And as I mentioned in the beginning, uh just share with the world that you participated in this event and uh, drop this on the stem discovery campaign map also before we end if you want to receive a certificate of participation uh, please validate your attendance and you can request it in this link also, we are actually interested in what you think of this webinar, and we have prepared a very short feedback sur survey. So if you take about three minutes of your time, we would really appreciate that to hear your thoughts and feedback on today's session, and so we know how to improve for the future. Now, in the coming days, we will publish this recording together with the slides on the STEM Alliance website. And we will also send you a follow-up email with all the details that you need. So thank you so much, Nina, for your demonstration and your time. And thank you so much to the audience for your interesting questions and the contributions that you've shared in the chat. That's all from our side. Take care and stay safe and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.